welcome to Raw and Prophetic with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Raw and Prophetic is where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. On this podcast, you will be encouraged through the Word of God to step in your purpose-driven assignment from the Lord and to be inspired and encouraged to be all that God has called you to be. So, welcome to our podcast. Here is your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. We are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. Blessings and peace to you on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. We are so grateful and thankful for you being a part of what God is doing, how he's blessing his people, how he's opening doors, and how he's just bringing things from darkness into beautiful, marvelous life. God is speaking and he is raising up a powerful prophetic army that's going to rise up in these last and evil days and de- declaring, decreeing the word of God, power and demonstration. So, if you are a prophetic person, and um, you just uh, to be encouraged, be encouraged in your in your in your trial of training, and allow the spirit of God to to do what He does to to just chastise you, um, equip you, and to get you ready for such a time as this. And so it is so important to be on guard in the spirit. To allow God to do what he needs to do. Because there's too many people in the prophetic ministry that has fallen by the wayside. That has allowed their flesh to override their spirit. And so today, I just want to encourage you. And um, we're going to talk about um, having uh, the keys of heaven. You know, um, having the keys of heaven. I really believe it's not just for those who are prophetic, but it's for the church. It's for the body of Christ. And so um, I want you to get the understanding of having a key. Do you not know that you play a key point in the kingdom of God? Christ chose and he found his church. And so... Christ, you know, he gave the the apostles these keys. He gave them keys to heaven. And we're going to talk about this in this broadcast. So I want to read Matthew 16. And I'm going to start at the 18th verse, Matthew 16, 18. It says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter upon this rock. I build my church. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you shall bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So isn't it amazing that Jesus had made a statement that I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And so whatever doors that you unlock on earth. They shall be unlocked in heaven. And whatever doors you shall open on earth shall be open in heaven. And so some other translations might say what you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven. What you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Okay. And so these keys open the door to the kingdom of heaven. And so what are these keys? Well, the keys is to God's kingdom or the gospel message. 
It is the key that brings one to Christ. Through Christ, we receive eternal salvation. What does salvation mean? To be to be uh, um, spared from something. To be saved from something. Okay? And so, Christ is the door to the kingdom of God. Okay? So, Jesus said in John 10 and 9, he says, I am the door. So whoever comes in by me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. So let's, let's, let's just go to that scripture. Let's just go to it because I want us to get a better and clear understanding. I'm going to read from, um, the new King James version of the Bible as we read this so we can get a better understanding because I want you to get an understanding of the keys that you hold. See, we think that, you know, it's so amazing because sometimes we think that man holds a key or I have to have the right connection um, to hold the keys. And that's not true because if you, if you allow um, man or people to dictate to you who you are in Christ, then, you know, you, you're, 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 at, you're putting yourself in damnation because you're trying to trust in people rather than trust in the savior. Okay. Trying to trust in people rather than trust in the savior. So let me, let me change this one second. All right. Hold on one second. Okay, so I found it. So here it is. It says in John uh, verse uh, chapter 10, 9, it says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out to find pasture. Okay. And then verse 10 says, the thief does not the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. So there it is. So Jesus tells the disciples that he has given them the keys of the kingdom. Okay. So you, the key, who is the key? You. You have access to unlock the door, which is Christ, because Christ says, I am the door. Okay. You have access to to unlock the door of heaven, the doors of heaven through Christ. And then let me say this. What I find a lot in especially charismatic and prophetic apostolic ministries is a lot of people would love, always stand up and love to say, God told me, God told me, God told me first and foremost, they, 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 they have, uh, illegally and on un, and un, un, unlawfully made that statement when they say it. And I know sometimes we say it out of habit, out of ignorance, because we hear other people talk that way, but you have to have access to God and it's only through the son. That's what Jesus is saying here. Okay. So he says that whatever you lock on earth, whatever, Jesus is what? He said, I'm giving you keys. I'm giving you the keys. He didn't say God's giving you the keys. Jesus didn't say God is giving you the keys. He said, I, Christ, the Lord, I'm giving you the keys. And so Christ gave the church um, access that can lock and unlock the doors on earth. All right. One of the keys that I believe is the entire gospel message. Okay. The entire gospel message, the gospel of Jesus Christ being unlocked. So as you read the word, as you read the gospels, you begin to become like the gospels. You be, begin to come a living epistle. You begin to come a living letter. Okay. Because you're not only unlocking it by what you speak. But you're also unlocking the kingdom of heaven by demonstration. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're, you're out in a, in a public place. Or maybe you go to a restaurant. 
and your order's not right. And so you go to the people or the manager or whomever, and you, you're telling them what's going on with your order, but they're not quite nice. They're kind of rude, arrogant. Okay, so you have two th- you have two choices to make. You can either entertain it by your flesh, or you can unlock the kingdom of heaven by demonstrating your peace, demonstrating your patience, demonstrating the gospel so others can see around you. Because clearly you've done nothing wrong. Your food was not ordered correctly or something was wrong with your food, but yet you're trying to make a complaint and these people are being nasty and rude to you. So how you do it, you have unlocked heaven because you are displaying fruit. You're displaying how to handle certain things, especially being a man and woman of God. Okay. And so here it is. Uh, Jesus is saying here that is interesting. Even in the book of revelation three and seven, Christ talks about the key of David that also opens and closes doors. Okay. These things he says, he who is holy, he who is true. He who has the key of David who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. So this key of David is also spoken of in the book of Isaiah 20, 22. The key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder. So he shall open and no one shall shut and he shall shut and no one shall open. And so the same key that Christ gave to Peter are simply the message of hope. That's why Jesus said that I am the door in John and whoever uh, comes into me, he said, I come that I may give them life more abundantly, but the, but the enemy comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. And so how's, how's that, how's that work apostle? Well, the, the devil comes to steal what has been already given unto you. First and foremost, the Bible says salvation is the gift of God. So when you're given salvation, now you're given the, his, the, the spirit of God. You're given the Holy Spirit. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, that gives you access to open and, and, and unlock the, the, the doors of heaven. Okay. But if Satan comes to try to discourage you, to steal your identity, or to have you to think that you don't have any identity, he's stripping and stealing the children's bread. He's taking away what has been already given unto you. Okay. The enemy will attack in different forms. He comes in different forms. He comes through people. You know, sometimes a door can open up for you, right? Let's say (coughs) you apply for a job. And so this job that you apply for pays really good money and you really want this job. You really want this career to flow. Well, you, you know, you're sharing your, your experience with some of the people in the, in the body of Christ and people that you, that you thought you can trust. So they're speaking negativity. They're speaking defeat. And so what they're doing is the enemy is using them to steal your peace and your trust. Because see, if Satan can, can steal our trust that's what he goes for he goes for our faith he tries to steal our faith then you won't turn the key to unlock your the the, the doors of heaven and how do you do that by using the word of god over your circumstance over your situation even if it may not look like it's going to turn around okay for example um, I remember one time when we first moved to the Jacksonville, it wasn't promising that my husband was going to get the transfer with Rest Rock. Okay. Because everybody else was getting transfers to different Rest Rocks in other places. And my husband was going through leaps and bounds and, 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 and hills and valleys to try to get this transfer. But it took an act of faith for us to move to Jacksonville without him being guaranteed that he would transfer with this company. But the act of faith that we stepped out and we moved, we didn't even tell people, we didn't know for sure we had jobs when we got here to Jacksonville. But my husband stated and said, I am going back to restaurant. 
and he's at Rest Rock. So what did my husband do? He used the key of David. He used the keys that Christ gave him and spoke it and believed what he spoke and said, I'm going back. They're going to hire me back at Rest Rock. I'm going back. And so it takes an act of stepping out of your comfort zone. It takes an act of stepping out into the unknown. And you have the access to turn the key. But a lot of people were saying, uh, even even the company, uh, let me back up because I'm making it sound too simple. Even when my husband was trying to get the transfer, he called the two paper mills here, two rest walks here. And they were saying, well, you got to go through your job. And so when my husband contacted the, 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 the human resource office in Panama City, they were saying, well, you, well, you got to contact them. Or you know, everybody was giving my husband a runaround, and it was all negative. All negativity. And I was starting to get discouraged. So what was the enemy doing? He was trying to steal my faith. But my husband, who was truly a man of faith, stood there and said he wasn't moved. He said, oh, I'm no, oh, I'm getting that job. And the more my husband said he was going to get the job, the more it encouraged me to say the same thing and to be in agreement with my husband. And I spoke to the Lord in prayer and I said, Lord, I know you did not bring us all the way to Jacksonville to fail. You did not bring us all the way to Jacksonville to be homeless. You will open a door. And sure enough, he did. And so... And so when, so, so Satan, that's why Jesus said that. He said, because every time you try to speak something concerning your well-being, the doors of heaven being opened unto you, the enemy will use people to try to close those doors, but it's not him that's closing the door. It's us because we listen to the enemy. And it's so amazing because we listen to negativity more than we listen to positivity. I mean, it's it's just natural for the human race. That's why Maury Povich and <clears throat> and um I can't think of the other guy. Uh and, and, and divorce courts and, and 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 cheaters, these type of shows uh blow up overnight is because it's full of negative energy. And people are drawn to that. And so the more negative the more we believe. And it's amazing how people would rather believe a lie then believe the truth. It is easy to believe a lie than to believe the truth. It is so hard. It is so hard for human beings to believe the truth. And, and you say, well, that's not true, Apostle. Yes, it is. Because, because this, is, this is why Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. People believe on every other God. They believe on every other religion. But they will not believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, God himself came in the flesh, walked amongst men, died on the cross, and got up on the third day. People, It's hard for people to believe that. But they'll believe a lie. Even the Bible speaks of the Antichrist. He's going to come and he's going to deceive the world into thinking that he is Christ. And people are going to believe it. That's why it is so important to be a one that walks with Christ. So that you're not, you're, not, you're not persuaded or influenced. One of the greatest tactics that Satan uses is influence. People are influenced in a lot of things. You could be influenced and like somebody. Somebody else could have had an alt with that person, a problem with that individual. You don't even know that individual, but you don't like them because your friend doesn't like them. Your friend said something evil about them. And this is sad that this goes on in the kingdom of God. This goes on even in, amongst preachers. They turn on each other or they won't invite somebody. Let's say they, they, I, they were going to invite someone. Now you're not inviting them. Now you all of a sudden have a change of heart because this individual that you happen to be good friends with doesn't care for this individual. And they're telling you they're not right. That right there, we got to be careful because that is sowing seed. That's throwing discord amongst the brethren. And one thing about me, I've learned, I don't say nothing. I just let people talk. I don't, you know, because one thing about me, you know, because sometimes people try to make you feel like you don't see nothing. Well, no, even if I do see it, I'm not going to agree. Maybe God sent you to that person to help them. You understand what I'm saying? And so it is so vital 
that you learn how to use your key. Learn how to use your key in heaven. Learn how to learn. You have to learn how to use your keys. And you learn through Christ. Okay. Jesus didn't just, Jesus did not just give us the promise of salvation. Okay. But he also gave us the promise of ruling and reigning over his throne. He gave us the promise of of his kingdom that will be no end he gave us the promise of authority we have authority in this earth realm and it's up to you how you utilize your key and if you want to if you want to be blessed and you want the spirit of god to open doors then utilize your key in alignment with the word of god okay The Bible says that the Lord would give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob. Okay. Abraham was the seed to the promise that was made, which is Christ. And if you belong to Jesus Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and you are an heir according to the promise. All right. Salvation was offered um, through Abraham. It was offered through Abraham. God made a promise. Okay. And so salvation is on the shoulders of Christ Jesus. He said that his government, he will wear upon his shoulders. Okay. So it is so important that you allow Christ to be that door that leads to God's kingdom and then eventually heaven. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is now. When he walked, he was saying you have, you're entering into a kingdom. When you receive Jesus Christ, when a person confesses Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they have entered into a new kingdom. And just when Jesus was on the cross and he was getting ready to be crucified, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. We are not of this world. Our kingdom is not of this world. We do things opposite of the world. We don't do what the world does. If somebody cusses you out, the world will cuss them out. You being kingdom will not cuss them back out. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how embarrassed you feel. I don't care if you feel like you've been punked. Do not part your mouth to retaliate because the Bible says that the battle is not ours. The battle says, the Bible says that the Lord will vindicate us. The Lord will fight for you. And especially you being prophetic, the enemy going to do everything in his power to get you to react in your flesh. In Exodus 14, 14, it says the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. There's times you get to hold your peace. Unlocking doors and in, 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 in the kingdom of heaven is holding your peace. There are times when you hold your peace, you have just unlocked heaven. And I know it don't seem like it because people are standing around saying, well, why should you say, girl, I wouldn't take that if I was you. No, because you know, you know who your God is. You know who your God is. The Lord will vindicate. Jesus even said, blessed are ye when men shall rival against you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Because people will say all kind of things. But if you know that you hold the key of David and that is Christ, that's what it is. See, if we try to be so deep. Well, who is the key of David? Christ. That's the key. Jesus is the key to unlock every door in heaven pertaining to your circumstance or situation. And so whenever you're dealing with an issue, you go straight to Christ. Don't holler, oh God. Go to Jesus Christ, the Christos, the anointed one. He has authority. And when you go to him, when you go to Jesus and you tell Jesus your situation, he's our elder brother. The Bible says he is our intercessor. 
He is sitting at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, making intercession for the saints of God. You know why Jesus is our key? Because Jesus walked in our flesh. He's the only one in heaven that tasted the flesh. That's what the Bible says. Don't taste and see the Lord is good. God is good because Jesus can relate to our flesh because he walked in our flesh. He knows our emotions. He knows what we feel. He knows the temptations that we face every day. And he is the key to help you to overcome those, those, those shortcomings and overcome those temptations. That's why he said, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world that you may overcome it also. There's no excuse. There's no excuse for you laying down your religion, laying your Bible down. Church folks will tell you that quickly. Girl, I wouldn't take that. You better lay that Bible down and deal with that thing and come back and pray later. But you know what you did? You laid down. What you did is you didn't lay the Bible down. You never picked it up. Because the word of God never tells us to go against the nature of Christ. To please people especially. Stop being a man pleaser. Stop worrying about how people view you and what they think about you. Walk in integrity. Walk in your kingdom assignment. And walk with your keys in your hand. We don't fight against flesh and blood. It's always spiritual with us. It's always spiritual. Yeah, you got to be so spiritual all the time. It's always spiritual. Even when people are around you in your flesh, it's still spiritual. Because you're becoming like Christ. Your spirit man is being made alive, which has lied dormant for so many years. That's why God blew his breath into us. But after Adam sinned, it separated us from God. So it allowed our inner man to become dormant. God never took away our inner man. It just became dormant because we're so distracted by sin and entertaining evil that Jesus came to open us out of that dark place and bring us into his light to be enlightened to truth that this is not the way to live. This is not the way to be. This is not the way to act. It's a better way. And so if you want to be blessed, you start learning how to utilize your keys. And God will honor you. And he will do it. One thing about me, I don't ever look for a platform for men. I go to Jesus Christ and I say, Lord, you open the doors. And when you do open the doors, open the doors for it to work out for my good. Are you hearing me? This is important because we're so caught up in being powerful and anointed. Well, what about walking in righteousness and peace? The Bible tells us to be at peace with all men. Even those who have hell in their heart and war in their heart against you. Be at peace. Shalom. Shalom, my brother. Shalom, my sister. You know, it's amazing how the Muslims do that. They, they love, they, they, they the main ones that got war in their heart, but they'll come up to you in a heartbeat and say shalom. Peace, my brother. Peace, my sister. Ain't no peace with them. But they'll show, come up and say it. Don't mean it. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. When you say shalom, mean it from the heart that you are at peace. One of the key principles in life is being at peace <laughs> with even your enemies. Baby, let me tell you something. Some of y'all ain't even getting no sleep at night because you're so worried about your enemy. you so worried about your enemy talking about you. you so worried about what your enemy saying against you. Baby, I have learned to let folk talk. And don't get me wrong, you be wanting to type something. You be wanting to say something so to your defense so bad. But I have learned just to be quiet. Watch God do it. Watch God. It's hard. It is. It's not easy. But you got to be quiet and watch God do it. Some of y'all ain't sleeping at night. Your body is manifesting things because I'm, I, and I'm not speaking out of uh, 
uh, being arrogant. I've been there. There are nights I couldn't sleep because I'm so worried. I'm thinking the enemy going to win. No, the enemy has already lost. No matter what people say about you, keep walking in integrity. You know how many people said me and my husband wasn't called? You know, today I shared a video on my Facebook where I, um, on the, in the, on the, from the memories on Facebook, where I was preaching and my husband was the only one in the room. And I got tears in my eyes this morning when I was that video because I said, Lord, it looked like I was talking to a whole bunch of people. And I, w- I wasn't talking to nobody but my husband at the time. But the Spirit of God, he enlightened me to say that it was never about us. It's always about Christ. But to do that, it took courage. And we did that for years. And I was always worried, even at that time, people think we crazy. People think, you know, because they were saying people did not believe for a moment that my husband and I was called in ministry because we didn't have a crowd. We had a few people come in here and there, but they really didn't believe it because we didn't have the crowd like everybody else. But we kept preaching. We kept teaching. And we're still doing it to this day. And I am so past crowds. Matter of fact, I'm more nervous with crowds now. I don't think I even want to preach in front of a crowd. I'm so used to preaching to a few. I'm so comfortable there. If the Lord was to tell me to get up in front of a bunch of people, I'm a nervous wreck. I ain't going to lie. I'm a nervous wreck because I want it to be, I want, I want the Lord to, to do what he does and, and speak, but I ain't used to that. And it's okay. I've gotten to a place that I'm content. I'm not complacent. But I'm content to who God called me to. I don't have to be well known throughout the world. As long as I'm well known in the kingdom of God. In heaven, my book is written, my name is written in that book. That's what's important. So get past all of that stuff. Walk and turn the keys of David. Turn the key that Christ has given you. You have authority. You have authority. Use your keys, but use your keys wisely. Don't use your keys out of ignorance. Don't use your keys out of being uh, out of negligence. But, you know, read the word, get in the presence of God and allow him to love on you, cherish you, strengthen you and encourage you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you that you have given us the keys to your kingdom that whatever we shall unlock on earth should be unlocked in heaven and whatever doors should be open on earth should be open on heaven and whatever we bind on earth doors that be closed on earth will be closed in heaven we thank you for your true salvation we thank you for the holy spirit and truth and we pray father god that you continue to lead us and guide us by your spirit. We don't want to be ignorant to the devices of Satan. So help us, Father God. Help us, Jesus, to use our keys wisely. Amen. We must get a place that we can get understanding And that we will use the principles of the word and ignite them in our hearts. So your principles of the word of God will be manifested in earth, in us. We thank you, Father God, for your spirit. And we ask you to continue to keep us covered in your blood. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. We thank you again for listening to Raw and Prophetic, where we are real, we are anointed, and we are prophetic. Amen. We bless God for his purpose. We bless him for what he's doing in our lives, and we ask that he'll continue to strengthen us 
and to keep us, lead us, and guide us. Amen. So use your keys wisely. Use your keys wisely in this hour. He's given us the kingdom of heaven. And, and, and let me tell you, he said, whatever you ask, whatever you do, he said, whatever you buy on earth, he said, whatever. Isn't it amazing how the Bible says that the Lord loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever, so whosoever and whatever you ask, it shall be given unto you. He said, whosoever. And he said, and whatever. So that's important. Isn't that isn't amazing? Whosoever and whatever. <laughs> that's a whole nother sermon by itself. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get off of here. Um, please be praying. God is moving. We're getting ready to go to a conference in Mobile. Um, and so Prophetic Criminal Rise Conference with Apostle Nakia Calhoun. And we are excited. God is going to move. We're praying for healing. We're praying for deliverance. We're praying for souls to be saved. We're praying for breakthrough. We're praying for <coughs> God's spirit just to have his way. So with that note, if you're in the Mobile area, I'll see you there. And I just want you to be blessed. And to, as I always say, <laughs> be made whole.